Uh, hello all, I hope you're all very well. Um, today I want to uh, do a part two to the video I, did, I put out just before this one uh, and it's about Abraham and we're going to look at the real historical Abraham and uh, identify him along with uh, some of his uh, kin and his immediate family. Um, first of all I, I want to just you know, remind everyone of of this of this series I'm putting together. We're going to identify the real uh, historical patriarchs, but they are Hyksos pharaohs. They came from um, above Egypt, from the Levant. Uh, from uh, they look as though they were most likely Amorites and Canaanites, but they had very long standing relations uh, with the Egyptian pharaohs. It looks like they are one very large kind of umbrella dynasty. Um, they were they would have been separated um, over time uh, and they would have formed their own uh, kingdoms and, and cities and so on, city-states if you like. Uh, and it's very, very interesting that we find in the Bible, uh, these these truths uh, and Josephus and Manetho, among others, do actually talk about these people as being real. Uh, it's just that the Hyksos, um, that Hyksos uh, point has been removed from history and certainly hasn't been talked about much over the 20th century. <clears throat> um, and I am interested here in showing you the names of the patriarchs and how they relate to uh, the Egyptian, these Egyptian pharaohs from the 14th, 15th dynasties. Um, so it's middle, middle kingdom, middle to late kingdom. Uh, and let's have a look at what Josephus says here about, um, about Abraham, because uh, it's quite interesting. He's not really equating him to any uh, lowly shepherd um, and we have this predominant view in the Bible that these uh, patriarchs were not particularly you know, powerful or wealthy people. This is not what we hear when we look at the... Well, if, we, if, you, if you pick apart the Bible, it does indeed say, of course, that Abraham was a, was a king and the shepherds uh, were kings. Uh, and this, in uh, Abraham here in the historical context, had 318 army officers and a formidable army of perhaps a 10, 10 to 15,000 men. Uh, this is no small number. And, um, you know, if he is one of the, if he is a pharaoh of Egypt from a kind of, uh, at the time when Egypt was split into two kingdoms, you know, lower and upper, uh, then, then this changes things a little bit. So I'm going to read you from uh, Josephus' uh, Antiquities of the Jews. And here it goes. Pharaoh Nechon, uh, king of Egypt at the time, descended on this land with an immense army and seized Sarah, the princess, mother of our nation. And what did our forefather Abraham do? Did he avenge the insult by force of arms? Yet he had 318 officers under him with unlimited manpower at his disposal. You know, so we see here, obviously, this man was, was powerful. He was a shepherd, but he was powerful, very powerful. Uh, and, of course, this shepherd uh, bit relates to uh, them being shepherds of, um, of a more astrological concept. You know, the, uh, the time had come to for, to acknowledge that in this in the skies the Apis worship the Apis bull worship was coming to an end with the age uh, with the end of the age of Taurus and we were now moving into the age of Aries and as I showed there was a, a much more um, prevalent iconography of Ram worship that started at about this time it was there um, before uh, in Egypt, it was still, I think, reasonably common, but not not particularly. But it came into vogue very much at the time of the uh, the Hyksos, and this was one of the biggest disputes in Egypt at the time. And the the Theban priests um, that worshipped the bull did not like this at all. 
and this would amount to what happened uh, afterwards with the expulsion of the Hyksos and it happened twice and this is another of these historical uh, m massive historical problems um, that, that, that plague so <laughs> historians today uh, now quickly here I want to look at Abraham's um, ancestors the, the last few ancestors uh, just behind Abraham uh, and you're going to see here I'm going to pull it up the biblical names the new pharaonic names and the old pharaonic names and you're going to see a synergy here these names connect in some pretty interesting ways and remember these are chronological uh, in a chronological order as well so this is quite interesting and these are biblical uh, biblical names uh, of the patriarchs and the old pharaonic names as well and they run in order this is again uh, strange if you're just going to put this down to to coincidence uh, but you're also going to see this in time with David's uh, David's name and David's lineage as well as Solomon's uh, and we're going to see that these pharaohs here these exos pharaohs Quite extremely nicely with the the um, patriarchs, and you have a, a, a load of historical context as well, and a number of other uh, different historical points that you can reference, such as the the ten plagues, obviously happening in Egypt. Um, so yeah, it's all worth uh, it's all worth thinking about. But we see here phaleg or phaleg. Uh, it translates as wifig or f sorry fawig and then wig af so fawig 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 wig af um, afraxad uh, and afraxad uh, the new pharaonic name and the biblical name of course uh, 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 quite pretty perfectly Cain uh, and then Cain and then Cain Heber Ekber Hak Uber uh, Ragu, not the past. Uh, Ragu Ragu Inen Jacob. Here's an interesting one. Jacoba and then Jacobam. These are the same names, really. With very slight um, drops or adages of, of letters in English. Joseph Sobem Sef. Uh, and Sobekim Sef. Now look at this Saf at the end of that. Joseph and Saf Saf. It's similarity, no, not as uh, clear as some of the others, but still a very interesting similarity there. And finally, we're going to read actually from an article in uh, Old World Mysteries. This is by Ralph Ellis himself. And please, um, Ellis's work is fantastic. Uh, and it's well worth checking out his YouTube series. Uh, he, he covers a range of historical subjects and they are extremely interesting. And his books as well are formidable tomes on, on, this, uh, on this subject. He's done a, a really admirable job at clearing up a lot of the, his, uh, the inconsistencies in moral, in, moral, in, um, in historical uh, scholarship. Uh, and it is it's, it's does seem very much to be um, true a lot of this I, it, it equates so well with what we know already um, there are subtle changes he has made in uh, translations of hieroglyphs and so on but they they are very fair and no one yet in mainstream scholarship has been able to credibly um, dispute his work so I'm going to read um little section of this uh, article I'm going to put it in the show notes there so you can read it yourself um, but here we go uh, Abraham finally we come to another pharaoh Nehosi Asera the pharaoh mentioned earlier who was in a military dispute with the biblical Abraham the equivalent names in the bible seem to be the father and grandfather of Abraham Nahor and Thara the pharaoh the pharaonic sorry, name Asara seems to equate very nicely with the bit oh, oh, um, simply dropped the initial A in the name. The fact that there was an original A attached to this biblical name is confirmed by the, the same stories that occur in the Quran, where the same individual, the father of Abraham, is called Asar. Uh, 
The Quran, however, seems to have lost the suffix, the A, at the end of the name. But if we conjoin, conjoin sorry, the two patriarchal names of Asar and Thara, we either derive the name Athara or Asara. All in all, it would appear that the pharaonic name uh, of Asara and uh, has been preserved rather well over the years in these religious texts. What we now have is the father and grandfather of Abraham being joined into just one individual in the Egyptian historical record, where he is listed under the two names of the Pharaoh Nehosi. The, the, you can see here historical Pharaoh Nehosi, Asara, the biblical patriarch Nashor, uh, Asara. This is a very satisfying argument. However, the whole edifice we have just built up seems to fall down on the count of one glaring error. The son Nehosi, the biblical Nahor Asara, fathered Abraham himself. Yet if we look at the historical record, the son of Nehosi, Asara, is a pharaonic a pharaoh called Seshi. This is truly unsatisfactory, and it seems to undermine all the progress that has been made so far. Actually, this is not so. It was just the result that was needed to finally convince me, and perhaps the reader, that this was not all wishful thinking, that this line of biblical pharaohs is a historical reality. Why? Because the throne name of the pharaoh Sishi is none other than Mamebra, or Mayebra, or Mamebra. Uh, this name not only sounds like Abraham or Abraham with the M or Mam displaced to the end, it is quite possibly another very simple and possibly deliberate mistranslation of it. The cartouche of Mam Abra looks like this. What better way to hide the name of a pharaoh than simply moving the first syllable to the end of the name? So subtle and yet so effective was the ploy that the truth lay, the truth lay hidden for thousands of years. Abraham was a pharaoh of Egypt. The Bible seems to admit this possibility even if theologians will not. Of Abraham it says, For a father of many nations I have made thee. Uh, yeah, and I shall make thee exceedingly fruitful, and kings shall come out of thee. The true royal status of Abraham can be seen once more. It is just as the Bible texts tell us. Uh, yeah, and kings shall come out of thee. Now the mat truth can be told. The biblical patriarchs were indeed powerful people. They were pharaohs of Egypt. So uh, I think some rather compelling evidence there. And remember, I'm going to cover David and Solomon and also, um, importantly, Moses. And I for forgot to uh, mention Moses. There's a ton of evidence uh, for the biblical Moses in the historical record. And some of you might already know who he, um, well, certainly who historians uh, think he was. Uh, there is some dispute, but... It, again, the, the evidence here is pretty profound. Um, I hope you all have a good day. I'm going to put the next video out uh, tomorrow. Um, and we're going to really begin to dig, dig deep. I don't want to take too much work from Ralph Ellis. Um, and I really want people to go and buy his books because the, the man is a, is a real genius on this subject. And he's like he has absolutely you know not been acknowledged I, I really hope that one day soon he is and that people start talking about this in the mainstream there does seem to be something or some people or something hiding this information um, obviously there's a, a ton of um, you know Christian countries that don't necessarily want to acknowledge that the biblical Israel really wasn't the um, place where so much of this happened uh, but yeah, we're going to look at the overwhelming evidence that that it was basically um, almost entirely an Egyptian story that uh, that the new you know sorry the Old Testament is based upon anyway have a good day take care see you later